Hello everyone, welcome to The Gourmet Gentleman, where we are learning how to eat, drink, and dress well, and to the glory of God. Today we're making the Moscow Mule Cocktail. We're going to be building the Moscow Mule in the cup, so first of all, we'll add some ice. I usually like to fill my mug about half full with ice, then add the ingredients, then top it off with the rest of the ice. Add two ounces of vodka. Squeeze one ounce of fresh lime juice. And about three ounces of ginger beer. If you are measuring like I am here, make sure you pour slowly so you don't get rid of all the bubbles. The ginger beer is the predominant ingredient in the Moscow Mule, so don't just use a ginger ale, use a good quality ginger beer. Now add more ice to top it off, and stir it up. You can garnish with a slice of lime, but I always like to use a few sprigs of mint. If you have the luxury to be able to grow your own mint, you can usually find a few pieces that have flowered like this one, and that makes a nice garnish. That's the Moscow Mule. What a refreshing drink. The lime juice and the ginger beer interact really well. The sweet and spicy and the ginger beer playing off the sourness of the lime and the vodka just kind of brings it all together. For food to eat alongside the Moscow Mule, I take some good whole grain crackers. Spread some cream cheese and apricot preserves on there. Mmm, that sounds fabulous. I think I need to go get some of that right now. The Moscow Mule is traditionally served in a copper mug like this one. But if you don't have a copper mug, no worries. Just use a highball glass. That'll work just as well. Making this drink in a copper mug lends a little bit of a rustic atmosphere to the drink, in my opinion. So I would wear a tweed suit while drinking the Moscow Mule. Since this drink is called the Moscow Mule and it is made with vodka, the first song I would put on in the background is the well-known Russian melody Dragoy Dlinyu. Dragoy Dlinyu means on the long road. The words were written by Konstantin Padrevsky and the music was composed by Boris Fomin, a Russian musician and tune writer who was born in 1900 in St. Petersburg. Fomin could play the accordion well at four years old. He joined the St. Petersburg Philharmonic when he was 14 and enrolled in the St. Petersburg Conservatory when he was 15. He was best known for writing romances, which were sentimental and very poetic songs celebrating traditional Russian culture that were very popular during the 1910s and 20s. Bowman's romances were probably the best known of their kind and remain very popular to this day. However, Boris Foman was practically forgotten because the All-Soviet Conference of Musicians banned Russian romances in 1929, calling them counter-revolutionary. Foman died in 1948. Oh my goodness, a flood. Foman died in 1948 in relative obscurity, but his songs began to rise again in popularity in the 1960s due to the relaxing of some regulations after Stalin's death. Most Russians only knew Foman's romances as traditional folk songs until the year 2000, when The Happy Unfortunate, the first biography of Boris Foman, was published, and Russians found out for the first time that many of their beloved folk songs were actually written by Boris Foman at the beginning of the 20th century. American musician and songwriter Gene Raskin used the tune for Dragoy Dlinyu for his song, Those Were the Days, and Mary Hopkins' 1968 recording of the song scored number one on the UK single chart and number two in the United States. Of course, Foman was not credited for the tune at the time because it was thought to be an old Russian folk tune. Dragoy Dlinyu was the first of over 400 tunes that Foman would write, and had the distinction of being specifically banned by the Soviets two years before the general ban on Russian romances. Alexander Zlatkovsky has recorded a fine piano arrangement of Dragoy Dlinyu, and the Johann Strauss Orchestra has performed a really nice orchestral arrangement as well. Our next song, Autumn Leaves, was originally a French song, written in 1945 by Joseph Cosma and Jacques Prevert, called La Fuelle Morte, excuse my French, which means the dead leaves. The English lyrics were written by well-known songwriter and musician Johnny Mercer, and Mercer's version was recorded by many well-known jazz artists during the 1950s. My favorite versions of this song are Billy Vaughan's easy listening instrumental arrangement and Nat King Cole's vocal solo recording. 
So go enjoy your Moscow Mule to the glory of God. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel for more videos like this, and thanks for watching.